So as to why the culture is the way it is, it's it just the way it is. I don't really know what caused the specific culture. It is possible that certain you know events that have happened in the past, but the truth is that segregation has not happened since 1965. And the fact that the culture seems to be getting worse in terms of things like the fatherlessness rates, it's going up three times what it was before, despite the fact that um, even like the incarceration rates have remained relatively the same since then. I just, I, I really fail to see where it's necessarily not personal choice in any capacity when we have these facts that back that point up. May I jump in on that very quickly? Yeah. Hey, by the way, guys, feel free to just to jump in. You. Feel free to just jump in and... As long as you're respectful for each other, you don't got to wait for me to call on you. Gotcha. So again, this isn't about, we're not talking about individual choice not mattering. At the end of the day, we're all made up of individual choices. What we're saying is that when we're talking about communities of tens of millions of people, patterns emerge that are consequences of given environmental conditions. If you take a look at marginalized communities anywhere around the world, I mean anywhere, Muslims in the Kashmiri region in India, or Uyghur Muslims in China, if you take a look at any marginalized group, you will find that for the most part, I mean overwhelmingly so, they have worse educational attainment. They have worse uh, income attainment. And the reason for that is because no matter how hard working any individual is, as a group, you are less likely to succeed if your family has less money, if your race has less money. So the problem that I have with what you just said, Red Eagle, is this is the hand-waving that ignores the underlying problem. As for why black culture is worse than white culture. Oh, who knows? Well, we do know. It's really easy socioeconomics. The reason why black culture, that's, we're being, of course, a little reductive there, but sure, the reason why it is the way it is is because black people have had a very different set of circumstances in America than white people. And a lot of that, the only way to fix it is to address those underlying problems. We can't just wave our hands at these huge issues that affect so many people and say, oh, well, if they just made better decisions, they would fix it. No, that's never, in well, any point in history, fixed a huge systemic discrimination problem. Well, the only do, thing that does that's not even how we policy. Make All right, so I wanted to analyze this statement that was just put forth by Vosh. And the crux of what he's saying here is that specific socioeconomic conditions correspond in specific socioeconomic outcomes, especially as it pertains to educational and or occupational outcomes that are rooted in going on to college and or university and or achieving economic prosperity rooted in socioeconomic upward mobility. Those opportunities are few and far between within the context of certain social environments, such as the inner cities in places such as Southside Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and various other places all throughout America. For example, educational and or occupational opportunities tied to socioeconomic upward mobility is more opportunities that are prevalent within the context of places like the suburbs and or middle to upper class places in Chicago as opposed to Southside Chicago. Now that doesn't mean that anomalies can't emerge, meaning individuals overcome tremendous odds, obstacles and hurdles that are found in difficult social environments such as Southside Chicago. But the point of emphasis that Vosh is making is that an individual's subjective experiences are not quantifiable to the objective analysis as a whole. So for example, when Officer Tatum pointed out earlier within the context of this debate, I was able to overcome certain obstacles Therefore, other individuals can do the same. But again, these instances are anomalies. 
not commonalities, meaning not every single single mother or born to a single mother child growing up in the inner cities of Cleveland is going to go on to become one of, if not the greatest basketball players of all time. Those stories, as much as we like to see them and as much as we praise them, are anomalies. They don't represent the commonalities. Therefore, we have to ask critical questions. Why are specific individuals, such as in the inner cities, not achieving educational and occupational attainment rooted in socioeconomic upper mobility? We have to consistently ask why, why, and why, because that provides sufficient explanations, such as maybe we need to invest more within the context of public education. Maybe we need to invest more in jobs. Maybe we need to have jobs that give workers bargaining power, such as the right to unionize. That would be sufficient explanations that yield specific policies. But merely occupying a position of, well, oh, 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 why don't you just like oh, oh, work harder, ignores the deeper analysis at play. But uh, let's take a look at this uh, back and forth exchange that took place between Officer Tatum, Red Eagle, and then Vosh providing his analysis. Choices, but do you think that historical conditions may have led to a difference in the average wealth that might then lead to other socioeconomic issues, yeah, like I the think, availability think, of quality schooling? Yeah, I think that I think some of them are historically um, said, but I think majority of what's happening today is people's decision making. Right. If you take school seriously and you get an education, you will you will be relatively successful. If you don't have children exactly. out of wedlock and have children before you you're, you're married. I mean, you'll do better. And, so, and when I, I grew up in an all black neighborhood, I know what people think. Um, and, and by and large, black people do not value education like other races. If you, why? When I was in school, there's when I was in school, that, yeah. it's culture. When I was but in why? school, why is why the is culture, the culture like that? Let me, let me fail to see where it's necessarily not personal choice in any capacity when we have these facts that back that point up. May I jump in on that very quickly? Yeah. Hey, by the way, guys, feel free to just to jump in. You. Feel free to just jump in and... As long as you're respectful for each other, you don't know, gotta wait for me to call on you. Gotcha. So again, this isn't about, we're not talking about individual choice not mattering. At the end of the day, we're all made up of individual choices. What we're saying is that when we're talking about communities of tens of millions of people, patterns emerge that are consequences of given environmental conditions. If you take a look at marginalized communities anywhere around the world, I mean anywhere, Muslims in the Kashmiri region in India, or Uyghur Muslims in China, if you take a look at any marginalized group, you will find that for the most part, I mean overwhelmingly so, they have worse educational attainment. They have worse uh, income attainment. And the reason for that is because no matter how hard working any individual is, as a group, you are less likely to succeed if your family has less money, if your race has less money. So the problem that I have with what you just said, Red Eagle, is this is the hand-waving that ignores the underlying problem. As for why black culture is worse than white culture, oh, who knows? Well, we do know. It's really easy socioeconomics. The reason why black culture, that's, we're being, of course, a little reductive there, but sure, the reason why it is the way it is is because black people have had a very different set of circumstances in America than white people. And a lot of that, the only way to fix it is to address those underlying problems. We can't just wave our hands at these huge issues that affect so many people and say, oh, well, if they just made better decisions, they would fix it. No, that's never, in well, any point in history, fixed a huge systemic discrimination problem. Well, the only do, thing that does, that's not even how we policy. Policy. Just if 